Hi everyone, welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Srinivas. So, today we are going to discuss about a for loop in C language. So, this is one loop control statement how it executes. So, what is the syntax and execution flow? Some of the examples we will see in this video, right? So, for loop. So, generally, what is a loop? Use it to execute a block of instructions repeatedly iterations right iteratively a set of instructions we are executing how many times as long as the given condition is true right so for loop is also used to execute a block of instructions for is a keyword right all are in a small case you have to write what is the syntax the syntax of for loop here so we are writing initialization statement sir what is initialization like i equals to 0 i equals to 5 right initialization followed by condition we need to write condition next one is modify initialization statement followed by the condition and modify statement and uh, here it is so we are writing the body so nothing but logic of a loop we are writing statements inside so this is simply for loop how it executes the flow so first initialization statement executes initialization after execution of initialization statement it will go and check the condition it will check the condition so, after condition what will happen? The control move inside. If condition is a true, the control move inside. Sir, if condition is a false, then it will terminate. Every loop terminates whenever the condition has failed. So, here it is. If condition is a true, the control move inside and it will execute the statements. After execution of these statements, now it will go and check the modify statement 4. So, modify means what? Increment and decrement statements. After modify, once again it will check the condition. So, this is 5. Sir, if condition is true again, then again control move inside. A statement executes and then it will go and execute modify and then it will check the condition. Means, the loop will repeat here only. As long as the condition is a true, it will execute initialization statement execute only once after execution of a condition the control move inside directly ok now we will see the flow chart a flow chart of for loop execution flow of a for loop here it is flow start so first it will execute initialization statement statements in a parallelogram we are representing so, this is initialization statement, initialization. After initialization, so now here it is, it will go and check the condition. It will go and check condition. Sir, if condition is a false, then it will terminate directly. The control directly come to end. If condition is a true, so, first it will execute, it will execute statements defined inside the block statements. After execution of statements, it will check, it will go and modify, modify statement execute. After execution of modify statement, again it will go and check the condition once again. Again if condition is a true, same process, here only the loop will repeat. If condition has failed, then the control come out of that and it will move to end ok. So, this is the flow right. So, one simple example we will see right how right a program will execute right using a for loop. So, one example on for loop see main a simple program just printing printing 1 to 10 numbers using for loop printing only just declare the variable declare the variable and all the three 
initialization statement 1 to 10 numbers. I value initializing with 1 initialization statement, second one condition and incrementing statement all the three we are writing in a single statement only and inside we are printing the I value, we are printing I value this much. So, very easy of using for loop. Here it is first I value starts with 1 initialization and next control come and check the condition. 1 is less than or equals to 10 condition true come inside it will print the I value I value 1 it will print after printing next it will go and modify I plus plus I value become 2 after that here it is it will check right 2 is less than or equals to 10 condition true up to 10 it will repeat 10 times it will repeat whenever I value become 11 11 is less than or equals to 10 condition false it is a simple program. Now, we will see how to find sum of first n numbers using for loop. So, program is sum of first n numbers right. So, here so first we are reading n value we are reading n value. So, here I am declaring variable n and here it is we are asking printf enter n value enter n value next scanf we are reading the n value, we are reading n value, just consider n value is a 5, n value is 5. So, now right I want to so print only just sum of first 5 numbers only. So, we are repeating the loop, we are repeating the loop, to repeat the loop i variable is required, i starts with 1 how many times it is not 5 it is n because n value varies that is depends on the end user input it is not a 5 always. Here it is i is less than or equals to n i plus plus. So, here what we have to do sir if n value equals to 5 then we need to find the value of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 sum of first 5 numbers sum of first 5 numbers is our program 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. Sir, every time whenever we are adding the numbers right where we are storing. So, for that so declare one variable sum and initializes with a 0. Sir, why sir we are initializing with 0? It is a local variable in C language if you are not initializing any local variable that is implicitly initializes with a garbage value. So, whenever we are adding the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that will be added to garbage value. Finally, it will give another garbage value. So, that creates a problem for you, that is why. So, here it is sum equals to 0, right. So, now every time i value is varying from 1 to 5, so to the sum to the sum we are adding i value and finally, the result we are storing into sum, result we are storing into sum this is. Sir, how this statement executes very simple, suppose if i value 1, i value varies from 1 to 5. So, first I am writing i value 1 to 5, 1 to 5 and here it is initially sum value is a 0, sum value 0. So, here sum equals to sum equals to sum plus i, sum equals to sum plus i. So, here it is. So, what is the sum value every time just check sum equals to every time we are storing into sum only we are storing into sum i value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Now, observe initially what is the sum value 0? 0 plus 1 will be stored into sum. So, now what is the sum value 1? Sum value 1. Next, this sum value will be stored here, sum value is a 1. So, 1 plus 2 2 the value will go and store into sum what is that sum value 3. Next sum value 3 
3 plus 3, 6 will go and store into sum. So, here it is sum value 6. Next, 6 plus 4, the value will go and store, sum value become 10. Next, 10 will be substituted, 10 plus 5, 15. So, final value of sum is a 15. So, like that the logic will execute. So, now, so finally, how we are printing? Very clearly, printf sum of first n numbers, nothing but 5 numbers, numbers is, is percentage d. Here it is n and sum we are printing. How it execute? Sum of first n numbers, n numbers means what? 5 numbers, because here user input is a 5 we considered. 5 numbers is some value it will print. What is the sum value? 50. So, message will be very clear at the end. Sum of first 5 numbers is a 15. So, this is simply how a for loop execute, right? How to find sum of first n numbers using a for loop. Now, we will see, right, how to check a number is a perfect number or not. How to check a number is a perfect number. This is using for loop once again. Now, the concept is a perfect number, perfect number. Sir, what is the perfect number? What is the perfect number means sum of factors of a given number except itself, sum of factors of given number except itself is equals to the same number confusion, just see the example, you will get clarity. Suppose, n value is 6 consider. Now, we need to find the factors of 6. We need to find the factors of 6. Here it is, we are checking with the i value. i value we as varies from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. n is divisible by 1 or not n is divisible by 2 or not, 3, 4, 5, actually no need to check with itself because except itself is there in the definition. So, here it is, n is divisible by 1 or not, right, divisible means reminder should be 0. So, reminder operator we are using, n mod i equals to 0 or not, yes. Next, n mod 2 equals to 0 or not, yes n mod 3 equals to 0 or not, yes, n mod 4 fail, 5 fail. So, 1 is a factor to 6, 2 is a factor to 6, 3 is a factor to 6 and of course, 6 is a factor to 6, but no need to check with itself. So, here it is just combined 1 plus 2 plus 3, again the result is a 6, it is equals to the n. Sum of factors of a given number is equals to the same number is called perfect number. Sir, how to write the logic? Very simple, observe. How to write the logic? Main, I am declaring the variable n because we need to read i and as usual sum we are taking 0, sum. Now, here we are reading the n value. How to read? Using printf and scanf only. Enter n value. Enter n value. And here it is we are scanning. Percentage D address of n. Address of n. And next one here it is we are checking. For loop. For loop. From 1 to less than itself we are checking. Every number is a factor or not. So, i value starts with 1 to less than n, not less than or equals to because no need to check with itself, important, i plus plus, i plus plus. Every time we are checking, if the n value is divisible by i or not, condition is a very clear, if n value is divisible by i or not, if it is divisible just add that i value to sum, add that 
i value to sum sum equals to sum plus i this is a program and here it is first i value 1 1 is less than or equals to 6 condition true come inside 6 mod 1 equals to 0 yes 1 is a factor so 1 will be added to sum sum value initially 0 that will become 1 next i value become 2 2 is less than or equals to 6 come inside 6 mod 2 equals to 0 s yes, condition true come inside that sum right 2 value 2 is added to sum so 1 plus 2 3 next i value 3 6 mod 3 equals to 0 yes that will be added next i value 4 right 6 mod 4 equals 0 fail next i value 5 6 mod 5 equals to 0 fail next i value 6 6 is less than 6 condition false it will terminate so finally we are checking if the given number is equals to sum then we can call it as a perfect number perfect number else else printf it's not perfect number it's not perfect number this is example how to check a number is a perfect number or not means the perfect number means the number right the sum of uh, factors of a given number is equals to same number of course except itself so how many factors we need to check using one for loop less than itself because no need to check with itself if it is a factor just we are finding the sum all the factors sum we are finding finally we are checking if the finding sum is equals to the n value then we can call it as a perfect number that's it now you people just try how to write the flowchart for perfect number how to write the flowchart for perfect number right in the next session we'll see some more examples on a for loop okay for more videos please subscribe to naresh id channel thank you